So I was lucky enough to go with work this week to the ATTD conference in France and I was involved in a session with the Vice President from Medtronic in the Sensor Technology Department who gave us um, the latest update on the best ways to get the most accurate sensor performance. And the things that came out of it were it's actually real practical stuff that everybody can do that can make a massive difference in the, in the sensor performance. So I'm going to run you through the seven top tips that was given um, so that hopefully you can benefit from those as well. The first one is, is that on most of the Medtronic videos and how most people place the sensor is that the mini link ends coming out at the side. So if it's on your stomach, it's out there. Whereas the suggestion is because it's on the side, when you bend and move, it moves backwards and forwards a lot more, causing the sensor to potentially pull out. Whereas if you insert the sensor so the mini link is either up or down, so for example, such as maybe there, or there, there's less chance of it moving in and out. So that was the first tip, is to make sure that it's portrait rather than landscape. So that's the first tip. And also he said um, that the best places to go are places where you have the least movement and rotation. So ideally on the upper abdomen somewhere around here, because down the bottom you have bending over and bending to the side, whereas the upper abdomen stays um, fairly fairly straight. The problem is some young children are very lean on their stomach and I probably are going to, it's going to go into muscle if I go in there. So I'm going to go onto my backside and rather than come on the side here where you have double rotations, I'm going to come right on the back here um, where I don't, it's only going to move up and down. So that's the, the first tip. The second tip that you mentioned was when people put the insertion device on, they press on too hard, leading when the insertion goes in, it goes into muscle. So to be really, really gentle when you do the insertion. So, as an example, so I'm going to go on the back of my bum here. So if I pressed on too hard like this, then that's going to go straight into muscle and bend the sensor. So just really gently on, squeeze the green button in, let it go, count to five, Three, four, five, green button in, and off you come. And take out the tower, and then make sure that that stays in place, and peel away the bottom. Another tip that was given was that this part needs to be as sticky as possible, so there was a suggestion to use something such as skin tack which will actually go through the porous part, which will make sure that it stays as sticky as possible. So this is the first time we're trying this. I'm going to give it a go now. So get the skin tack out. And rub it onto the area. So it actually goes through the porous parts. Because the stickier this part is, the less chance there is that the sensor will, will move. Okay. So the next part is to apply the overtape. Making sure that the overtape pins the base in place. Again, to make it extra sticky. Now another tip that was given is that people sometimes put the sensor in and maybe leave it overnight or an hour or two hours to allow it to settle. But unfortunately there is an enzyme in the sensor that is working away on the oxygen and the glucose and building up peroxide that can't be um, got rid of unless the guardian link is attached to it. So the peroxide build up if left for longer than five to ten minutes can actually affect the sensor. So I'm going to attach to my guardian link now and you can see that it is going in portrait, not landscape. So clip that in. Wait for the green flashing light. There, so it's connected there. 
And another tip was given was sometimes people pull this tape over and pull it really tight therefore lifting the centre up. So be really gentle as you come across, just nice and gently. And then again to try and keep this in as place as possible is to put a second over tape over the top. So again the, the minimal movement the better because then the centre can't be pulled out of where it's at. Over the top there. Therefore the sensor is not going to be moved. Perfect. And the final tip that was given is that when you do your calibrations you must calibrate immediately. So as soon as you do the blood glucose is to calibrate within seconds. If you're someone at the moment who leaves it one minute or maybe five minutes or maybe wait until the eating in ten minutes time to calibrate, that really affects the accuracy of the sensor because the calibration needs to be done as soon as possible. So basically don't wait to calibrate. As soon as you've done that blood glucose, ensure the calibration is done. So yeah, that's the top tips for the sensors. So I shall show you my report from the week before and the week after to see if my if that's at least an improvement in my sensor performance.